Hi and welcome back to PJ Maybe's YouTube channel. Today's commander deck is going to be a pre-con that has been amended. It's my 2017 commander, uh, Warcat commander. It is Arabo Roar of the Wild. This has got an eminence and at the beginning of combat you can put a plus three plus three on, a, a, on another cat you control till the end of turn. Um, it's also got whenever a cat you control attacks you may pay 3 which is a colourless, a green and a white. If you do it gains trample and gets a plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is its power. So in effect you're doubling its power for 3 mana. You could do that a couple of times and it could triple the mana plus. Um, if you've already given it the eminence which is given it a plus 3 can make one creature quite powerful and give it trample. So it's a good commander and it was one of my first commanders I purchased and to play the game and all I've done is just keep it going and then again time I get a new decent card I've been adding to it. So I thought I'd go right through this deck and we'll see how it goes. So We'll look at the legendary creatures first, and you'll have to forgive me, some of these creature names are just ridiculous that I know I'm going to mispronounce. Anyway, we'll start off with Mary Weatherlight Duelist. She's uh, another cat creature. I don't think there's anything that's not a cat creature in this one, apart from your standard spells and, and artifacts and such like, but I'm sure I'm sure all my cat creatures, all, all my creatures are cats. Because it's a fully cat tribal deck, I've tried to keep that in it, so I've not added anything in that would change that. So anyway, Miri. First strike, and whenever she attacks, each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat. As long as Miri is tapped, no one can attack you with more than one creature in each combat. So you can attack with a lot, and she forces just one creature to block. It doesn't say one creature blocking her. It just says no more than one creature can block. So if somebody's got a lot of tokens out, attack with everything. Might kill one, but everything's going through and you can imagine she'll be the target. So if you use the Eminence ability on her and the uh, Aroba's uh, other ability, bump her up, give her trample. Hopefully she'll survive it each turn. So a nice card. Next one is Kemba Kai Regent. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 2-2 two -two white cat creature token for each equipment attached to Kemba. The, um, I've got a lot of uh, equipment out, a lot of them are quite cheap, so that is uh, one of the reasons why this is quite an equipment heavy deck. Then you've got Balan Wandering Knight. It's got first strike and it has double strike for as long as two or more equipments are attached to it. So same again, it's a 3-3 three -three and you can attach a couple of equipments to it and it gives it double strike and for one and a, a color, um, one white and a colourless you can attach all equipment you control to it so it saves all the equipment um, equip costs then you've got Jazzle Goldman it's got first strike and for three and two white attacking creatures you control get plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is the number of attacking creatures so if you've got a lot of tokens out, attack with everything and then pay that, then every creature yet is attacking gets that. So then you've got Jareth Leonine Titan. It's a cat giant. I like this one. This is one of my favourite cards in the deck, I must admit. When it blocks, it gets a plus seven, plus seven. It comes on as a four seven anyway, but when it blocks it becomes a eleven fourteen. So and then for one white, it gains protection from a colour of your choice till the end of turn. So keep one white active and then basically you can block the big creatures coming in with that one. Then you've got, this one I'm going to mispronounce, I know I am, is Jedit Onani of Ephrata. I have no idea how to pronounce that, I've tried it numerous times. Anyway, it's got Forest Walk and whenever it attacks or blocks I create another 2-2 two -two green cat warrior token with forest walk. Then you've got 
Nazan, Reverend Blacksmith. When it enters the battlefield, you search your library for an equipment card and reveal it. If you reveal a card named Hammer of Nazarin, this way put it onto the battlefield, otherwise put the card into your hand. So if you've already got the hammer out, it gets you another equipment card you can actually put in, otherwise it puts that out on the board, ready to be equipped. Then you've got Raksha's Golden Cub. It's got Vigilant, and as long as it's equipped, cat creatures you control get a plus two, plus two. So even shoving a wee cheap plus one, plus one on it, gives every cat it says cat creatures which also includes it so gets plus two plus two and double strike so that's the legendaries so we'll go on to the rest of the creatures then you've got one which seems to be a mainstay in most of these decks is a Janice plague mate whenever you gain life you put a plus one plus one on it then you've got feral prowler when it dies you draw a card, a wee bit of card draw, not a lot but a wee bit. Then you've got Fleece Main Lion, uh, for 3, a green and a white, uh, you can make it uh, give it monstrosity. So if it hasn't got it you pay that and get a plus one plus one counter on it. And it says as long as it is monst monstrous, it has hexproof and indestructible. So although paying 5 just to get a plus one plus one on it, it gives it a lot of extra stuff on it, so it's quite good in that respect. So, Oresco Explorer. Whenever it enters the battlefield, search your library for up to X playing cards, where X is the number of players you can who, who control more lands than you. So, it's not going to happen, but if you you start off third, there's going to be a point, even if every, nobody misses a land draw, if you're playing a four player game, three of them are got, you can get three land, four, two. It's just a wee bit of mana boost, mana ramp. Then, Quasili Pride Mate. It's got Exalted. So, whenever a creature you control attacks alone, that creature gets a plus one, plus one. And for one, you can sacrifice it and destroy an artifact of enchantment. It only costs two and it gives you a two two so can I see a lot of use out of the dis except either card draw sorry destroying a, an, an artifact of enchantment but it's an okay card. Then you got War Priest of Thune. When it enters a battlefield you may destroy target enchantment. And then you've got Generous Stray. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card, more card draw. Then you've got Pride Sovereign. It gets a plus one, plus one for each other cat you control. So if you've got a lot of cards out, a lot of um, cats out, tokens, whatever, it can become quite powerful. And for a white, you can tap them and exert them, which creates two plus one, plus one white cat tokens with lifelink. And when you obviously exert it on the Disney untap during your next untap phase. Then you've got Bashri's Acolyte. It's got lifelink and when it enters a battlefield put a plus one plus one counter on it for each um, on each up to two other target creatures. So you can give something a plus two plus two or two other ones plus one plus one. Anyway, then you've got Healer of the Pride. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain two life. Just a wee bit of life ramp. There's not a lot of cards in here that deal with life ramp or it messes around with it. That's one or two, but I'm limited to the cats I've got in my collection, so a lot of the cats I've got in my collection are here. Any new cats always get looked at to see how they'd fit. But Leon's Anibus. Um, artifacts you control can't be targeted by spells or abilities your opponents control. So because I've got a lot of artifacts, it's basically protecting them. And Leonine's War Leader. When he attacks, create two white token uh, cat tokens, one ones, with lifelink, and they're also tapped and attacking. So attack somebody without any blockers, you can build up your cat tokens. And you got Sets Tiger, it's got Flash. When it enters the battlefield, you gain protection from colour of your choice until the end of turn. 
So just wait until that big zombie deck attacks you with all those totems and flash him. That'll mess it around because hopefully they've not got vigilance tapped out and then you can attack and get your own back. Anyway, Springing Tiger, it's got Threshold. Springing Tiger gets a plus two, plus two, and the Threshold as long as you have seven or more cards in your graveyard. So, playing it later on is actually not too bad. Then you've got Timur's Sabretooth, and for one in a green, you may return another creature card you control to its owner's hand. If you do, it gains indestructible until the end of turn. Ideal if you've got something that's got some nice triggers, um, entering triggers, bounce it back to your hand and then play it again. Now you've got Keeper of the Fables. Whenever one or more non-human creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. So, considering they're all non-human, so any damage I get done, it's just card draw. Then Quazili Slinger, it's got Reach, and it says when it or another cat enters the battlefield under your control, you may destroy target artifact or permanent. So if you can get that out, well, it's four in a green to get it out. So if you can get it out fairly early, then you can actually control opponents, artifacts and enchantments. It would cause you problems. Then you've got Rigo Caracal. Other cats you control get a plus one, plus one, and have lifelink. And when it enters the battlefield, create two plus one, plus one, um, one, one to white cat creature tokens with lifelink. So, more cats. Then you've got Nakatal War Pride. When it attacks, it must be blocked by exactly one creature, if able. And whenever it attacks, you put X tokens into play, tapped and attacking that are copies of Nakali War Pride whenever X is the number of creatures defending player controls. Remove that token from the game at the end of turn. That's ideal. So if you've got somebody who's got a lot of 1-1 one -one tokens, if you're playing like a, a token deck, having that out and attack, uh, attacking, then each of the tokens, one of them have to block you. And if you, you're attacking somebody who's got 10, 15 tokens, it creates 10, 15 of these, which can destroy it, which that is, as soon as I got that, I knew that was going in my deck. Then the last two are Spirit of the Hearth. It's flying and it says you have Hexproof, so stops you being targets. And then the last one is Fata, uh, Phantom Nishobi. However you pronounce that one, I'm terrible with these pronunciation. It's got Trample and it enters the battlefield with 7 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it and when it deals damage you gain life you gain that much life so technically seeing it's got lifelink but if damage is dealt to it you, pre you prevent the damage and you remove a plus 1 plus 1 counter so if somebody tries to block it with a 1-1 one -one death touch it doesn't kill it all it does is just removes one of the plus 1 plus 1 counters handy Especially if somebody's got death touch, you can just keep blocking them with it and just reduce it gradually. But that's the creatures. We'll go on to the enchantments and the spells prior to going on to the artifacts. I've only got one en enchantment aura, and that is Gift of Immortality. You can enchant a creature, and when enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under the owner's control, and then return Gift of Immortality to the battlefield attached to that creature at the beginning of your next end step. So if you attack, if you, I plan to put that on my commander. That means that if any time my commander gets killed, he bounces straight back to the battlefield. And unless he gets taken out again straight away, that's going to come back and put it on at the end of turn. So it retains him just means you don't want to use them as a blocker because, well I suppose you could because it says the next 10 steps, it's not just your turn. So that is on the deck, that's in the deck, just this to put or attach to my commander. Basically, that um, swift boots is perfect. It means he can't be targeted and if it gets damage dealt some other way, he bounces straight back. So a cyclonic uh, rift and basically Anything it does, a board wipe brings them straight back, so it gives you that on a bonus. Anyway, we're going to the enchantments, there's only five of them, 
So you get a Janny's Welcome. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control, you gain one life. Then you've got Aura Shards. Shards. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. So it's another opponent damage to their artifacts and enchantments. Then you've got Duelist Heritage. Uh, it's whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have target, target attacking a creature gain double sight until the end of turn. You've got True Conviction. Creatures you control have double strike and lifelink. And then Zendikar's Resurgent. Whenever you tap land for mana, add one mana to your mana pool to of any type that land produces. And then whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. That's a good one. I like, really like the Zendikar Resurgent. Basically, every time you get a creature, you get a card. And it doubles your mana. So that's the enchantments. So we'll look at the spells. There's only three instant spells in this deck and it's brought back. Choose up to two target permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn and return them to the battlefield. Ideal if anybody actually gets rid of some of my good artifacts. Bounce them straight back. Then you've got Kindred Summons. Choose a creature type, usually cats. Reveal cards from the top of your library until reveal X creature cards of the chosen type, where X is the number of creatures you control of that type. Put those cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle the rest and reveal uh, the real cards at your library. Cost 7, 5 and 2 green. And considering if you've got, say, 5, 6 creatures out, tokens even, on the battlefield, play that. You're doubling the amount of creatures and you could get some really powerful ones out. Then you've got White Sun Zenith. You create X two two white cat creature tokens and shuffle um, shuffle White Sun back into your the library. So you play the instant. It's X and three white, and you get X two two cat tokens. And the good thing is, it doesn't end up in your graveyard. Get shuffled back into your library. Then sorceries. We have got four. Not a lot of spells in this deck. It's just basically creatures and equipment. First one is Appeal and Authority. So the appeal is until end of turn target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus X where X is the number of creatures you control. And Authority is after, it's got Aftermath. It can cast from your graveyard obviously. Tap up to two target creatures your opponents control. Creatures you control gain haste and uh, sorry, gain vigilance until the end of turn. So it's just to give my creatures a bit of boost as well. Then you've got Nissa's Pilgrimage. Search your library for up to two basic forest cards. Reveal those cards, put them into the battlefield, tap, and the rest into your hand. So, two basic cards, put one onto the battlefield, tapped, and the other one into your hand. And it's got Spell Mastery. If there are two or more instants and or sorcery cards from your in your graveyard, you can search for three basic lands. So, instead of two. So... You get one on and you get at least two cards, uh, two lands in your hand or one minimum. Then you've got Divine Reckoning. Each player chooses a creature. He or she controls, destroy the rest. So if you've got your, if I've got my commander out with the return one, I can choose another card, destroy my commander and bring them straight back. Part Boat Ripe and it's also got flashback for seven and you can cast it from your graveyard so you if somebody's actually gone over the top you can flash it straight back and do the exact same again then you've got transfers the out outlands search your library for up to x basic lands cards where x is the greatest power among creatures you control put those cards onto the battlefield tap and shuffle your library if you do it just before an attack or just after an attack because it's a sorcery you basically use the eminence, boost them up, and then you can actually get six, ten cards, depending on the creature you've actually boost. So that's the spells, enchantments, and creatures. Uh, I've got a number of lands, um, but I've got a lot of uh, artifacts. We'll stand, start with the basic artifacts before we go into equipment. And I've only got one legendary, which is the God Pharaoh statue. Spells your opponents cast uh, cost two more to cast, and at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life. It's only just to actually screw with their casting. 
and good thing is, if somebody gets rid of it, I've got spells to get it back out the, the graveyard. Then we've got a standard soul ring. Soul rings in most decks, so everybody knows what that is, to colourless mana. Then we've got Pillar of Origins. As Pillar of Origins enters the battlefield, choose a creature type, cat. Add one mana of any colour to, to your mana pool. Spend that only to cast creatures of that chosen colour. So it's just a wee bit of a mana ramp, and it's only for the creatures. Then you've got Command Sphere. Add one colour of any, and then you can sacrifice it if you need to, to draw a card. Then you've got Mana Geode. It's add one colour of any colour, or one mana of any colour, but it's also got Scry when it enters the battlefield. Then you've got Hedron's Archive. It adds two colourless. You can sacrifice it and draw two cards if you need for two. So that's the artefacts. They're just basically mana ramps and such like. So we'll go on to the equipment. These are the ones that are... Could probably take some of these out and might be a wee bit over the top with them, but I do like the equipment in this deck, so I'll we'll see how what you think about it. Any comments, please let us know. So you've got Sword, Sword of the Animist. It's an a quick creature gets a plus one plus one. Whenever a quick creature attacks, you may search a library for a basic land card and put it in a battlefield tap and shuffle a library. Basically. It's only a wee plus one plus one, it costs two to come out and two to equip, but it allows you to get card draw anytime. So attach it to a token, attack, token may die, but you just attach it to another token later on. So you can get card draw, or you can get land draw each turn. Then you've got Hammer of Nazine. Whenever it enter, or that or another equipment enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach that equipment to a target creature you control. And a quick creature gets a plus two plus zero and has indestructible. That basically allows other equipment to be attached for no attachment cost when they enter the battlefield. So it's quite handy for that. Then for our equipment we've got 14. So you've got Stone Forge Masterwork. A quick creature gets a plus one plus one for each other creature you control that shares a creature type with it. And it costs two to equip, so you can get if you've got enough tokens on the board, you can actually have quite a powerful creature for cost one to cast and two to equip. Then you've got honed Keotep. Basically it's just a one to cast, one to equip, and it gets a creature a plus one plus one. Some of the equipments actually have bonuses for other equipment attached, and that's all it's for. Then you've got Masterwork of Ingenuity. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any other equipment on the battlefield so depends even if your, uh, your opponents have got something decent on you can just copy it then you've got blood forged battle axe quick creature gets a plus two plus zero and it deals combat damage to a player you create a token copy of it so you can have multiple of these then you've got hero's blade quick creature gets a plus three plus two and whenever a legend's creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may attach this to it. It costs four to equip, but if a legendary creature comes in, you can bump that on straight off, no cost. Then you've got Swift Foot Boots, Crypt Creature, Hexer, and Haste, and it costs. Basically, that is for a commander. It allows it to come on and do what he needs to do straight off. Then we've got Blade of Selves. Crypt Creature has Mydred. And basically when it attacks you create a copy of it and attack each other opponent so if you're playing four players so anytime you create it you create an R2 attack your other opponents um, they just become copies of it and then you dispose of them at the end of the turn so it's just basically give you other options for attacking then you've got BMR's Edge a quick creature gets a plus two plus two and has lifelink and trample it only costs three, one white, uh, one a green and a white, and it costs three to equip. So just a wee bit of a boost. Then you've got heirlooms blade. Quick creature gets a plus three plus one. Whenever a quick, uh, quick creature dies, you may reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card that shares a creature type with it. Put that card onto your hand and the rest at the bottom of your library. Just allows you. You could put that in a token, the token dies, you can get another card out of your deck on your hand. 
Then you've got Loxodon's Warhammer. Quick creature gets a plus three, plus zero, and trample on the lifelink, and it only costs three, and it's three equip as well. Then you've got Quietus Strike. I'm not entirely sure how, if I pronounced that correct, but it's a quick creature has death touch. Whenever a quick creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses half his or her life rounded up. It'll cost three to put out and three to equip. So that can be quite powerful. Get some of your opponents, put it in a flyer. If there's no got a flyer, you can just whittle them down. Then you've got Sword of Vengeance. Quick creature gets a plus two, plus zero, and has first strike, vigilance, trample, and haste. And it's three cast, three to equip. So same idea. It gives you a lot of nice boost, but as you can see, these are all just to actually multiple out on certain um, creatures. You've got Grappling Hook. Quick creature has double strike. And a quick creature attacks, you may have target creature block it this turn if able. So if you want to get rid of a nasty creature, somebody's got out something out that does damage and they never use it to attack, you can actually force it to block. Then you've got Agentum Armor. Cost 6, equip 6. And a quick creature gets a plus 6, plus 6. And whenever a creature attack, um, a quick creature attacks, you destroy a permanent. So you can destroy the, the the opponent's commander, whatever. As soon as you attack, it doesn't matter if they block it or not. As soon as it attacks, you can destroy a permanent. So, and it doesn't say, so you, it says equip creature attacks, destroy target permanent. So you can attack somebody who's got no blockers, do the damage, and then attack an opponent's big beast or creature. So it allows you to do a lot of damage that way. Then we'll go on to lands. Basic forests, I've got eight of them, and basic plains, I've got nine. So that's the basic lands, and the rest of them are blightened woodland. Basically, it's just one colorless mana, but for three and a green, you can sacrifice it. Search for up to two basic land types, tap it. So if you want to later on, you can actually bring in our two lands, so it gives you a wee bit boost. Then you got blossoming sands. It enters tapped and you gain one life and it gives you a green or a white. Then you've got command tower. Add one to my pool of your identical colour, which is green and white. Then you've got Elfheim Palace. It gives you a green and white and it enters tapped. Then you've got Grey Pelt Refuge. It enters tapped. You gain one life and it gives you a green and a white. Then you've got Mosswold Bridge. It's got hideaway. This land enters the battlefield tapped. When it does, look at the top four cards in your library. XL one face down and put the rest to the bottom of your library. It gives you one green mana and for one green and tapping it, you can play that XL card without paying its mana cost if the creature you control have a power 10 or more. So get some big beast, put it there and then that. It says XL card, it doesn't necessarily say so you could put anything out on your big artifacts, something. Anyway, my druid landscape, it ha gives you cur one colourless, it enters tapped, and you, ca you can sacrifice it for two, and s basically search for two basic land cards, it's either land type, and put them in a battlefield tapped. So, yeah, doubles your mana up, that gives you one colourless, for two you can actually get two lands out of it. Then you've got Opal Palace, gives you one colourless, but for one and tapping it, you can add one mana of, of your commander's colour identity. And if you spend it to cast your commander, the commander enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it, equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone. So if your commander's been backwards and forwards a few times, it's, it comes in with, ex, uh, with a bonus on it. And you've got Rogue's Passage. One colourless and you can, for four and tap it, you can target creatures can't block. So you can stop some death touch, big creature, flyers, whatever, from blocking you. Salt crust step, one colourless again. And you can tap it for one and put a storage counter on it. And you can, for one, you can remove X storage counters from it and add X mana of any combination of white or, uh, white or green 
to your mana so if you've not got anything to do you've got spare mana just tap it and put a storage counter on it and it's just mana storage so you don't waste mana turn to turn to turn so less than guild gate uh, enters tapped, gets you a, one, a white or a green. Nothing special in that one. Celestine's Sanctuary, it enters tapped, and when it enters tapped, um, you have to return a land. This is the one that gives you a white and a green, so it's a dual land. But that's if dual land is the right wording for that, I'm not entirely sure because some people I've heard call dual lands the one that gives you green or white. Some will call them dual lands if it gives you green and white, so. I call it a dual land because it's two. Anyway, you've got Stefan's Dunes. It gives you one colourless and you could pay one life and add a white mana to your pool if you need to. And for two and two whites you can sacrifice it and creatures you control get a plus one plus one till the end of turn and you can only activate it if it's a sorcery. And Stirring Wellwood, it comes in tapped, gets you a green or a white and for one and a green and a white it becomes a three four green and white elemental creature with reach uh, but it's still land just in case then you've got sun scorch desert uh, it deals one damage as it comes in and gets your colorless then you've got tranquil expanse it comes in tapped and it gets your green or a white then you've got vivid grove it enters with two charge counters on it you can tap it for a green but you can also tap it and remove a charge counter from it and add one mana of any colour. So it gives you the option for white a couple of bits down the line. Then the last land I've got Vivid Meadows. Vivid Meadows enters the battlefield tapped with two charge counters on it. And it, you can it's the same idea but this is for white and that one is for uh, green. So that is the deck. As you can see it's base, it, there's a lot in it still from the original commander deck and I've added a few bits and bobs. But anything you think I need to amend, please let me know. I'm always happy to take criticism of my decks but I also want to improve them so if you've got any way of helping the deck get better, please leave a comment. If you like what you see, give a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more. And thank you again for view, uh, tuning in to view my small channel. And remember, I'm not old, I'm classic. PJ may be out.